Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us and welcome to the Self Care Forum podcast. I'm your host, uh, Dr. Cedric Batchetu. Uh, here on the Self Care Forum podcast, we bring you knowledge that will empower you to address the root cause of your disease. Our goal, of course, is to interest you in the care of the human frame, in diet, and in the cause and prevention of disease. Uh, today's guest is uh, Mr. Damon Jones. Mr. Jones is an activist, health and wellness coach, publisher, and law enforcement professional. He's also the author of a wonderful new book called The Empowering Benefits of Detoxing, Cleansing, and Eating Clean. The purpose of his book is to help you gain optimum health and wellness, to charge your body's mental clarity and spiritual frequency through food. Uh, Mr. Jones, thank you so much for joining us. You have the floor. Just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and you know your background and, and what you do. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Damon Jones. Um, what pays the bills? I am a correction officer for uh, the Westchester County Department of Corrections. I've been working there for 32 years. Um, and um, in that job, I've also become a local activist um, for law enforcement, um, dealing with the issues of police and community uh, relations. I'm also the publisher of Black Westchester Magazine um, and BlackWestchester.com, um, which is an online uh, magazine um, that gives the Black point of view on issues throughout Westchester in the tri-state area. On, on different news items and, and just giving a, a different paradigm um, about, about black media. Uh, we also go, we also print. Um, we have a print paper that comes out once a month and we try to distribute it throughout Westchester. Um, it's been kind of rough throughout COVID because we usually use the churches as, as, as a drop off point where people can get the paper up. Um, but a lot of churches are they're starting to open back up now, so you could you could find them more. Um, so, but when we talk about health and wellness, you know, as a as a young black man and a law enforcement officer, um, I, I get a double whammy um, because as as a correction officer is one of the highest uh, stress level jobs in the world, and um, our average age of living is fifty eight. Our lifespan after retirement on average is 18 months. And a lot of us die from, from heart disease um, and, and different chronic, chronic illnesses. So that parallels uh, being a black person in America and, and living off um, a black American diet, those issues that we have. Um, I didn't get into health and wellness um, until um, after being um, a caregiver of my mother for three years. And, and I watched her health deteriorate, you know, over the years and open heart surgery, um, dealing with diabetes, um, getting her leg amputated, um, dealing with those type of issues and then, and then her passing away. Then the process, I noticed that I was beginning to be put on the same medications that she was on. And um, it wasn't to a, a friend of mine, a, a lot of people know him. Uh, he's running for mayor, Bro Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams, um, until I, I saw him on the news. And then at one event, I, I talked to him about his transition um, from fighting diabetes, going blind in one eye, and, and changing his, his health lifestyle you know, to a plant-based diet and exercising more. And so I decided to do it myself. And this book is actually the information I've gathered for myself. Um, I I'm, I'm all, always a data person, you know, um, dealing with law enforcement and, and being a publisher of a newspaper. Um, I'm, a, I'm an informational type of guy and I like to give information. And I think um, putting my, um, my life, my journey, my health journey on social media and people seeing uh, the transformation, um, living a healthy lifestyle, not just physically, but mentally, right? We also, a lot of times we, a lot of times we don't um, add the mental part in health and wellness. You know, we, we like to look at the physical part. Are we losing weight? 
you know, are we, do we have to buy new clothes because we're losing all this weight? How, you know, how big are our muscles, right? We, we, we like to talk about that and see that because it's visual, but also we, we don't talk about the, the issue of being healthy mentally, um, because I think that's also part. And understanding that the foods that you eat um, contribute to your mental health also. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I wanted to put all that in a book and, 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 and share my experience. And for people that was asking me what I did and, and people that looked at me as, as for inspiration and seeing that I could do it, you know, I wanted to give them a little blueprint on how they could do it also. Thank you for that. I, I think it's very well said. You know, there's one thing uh, that you wrote in your book and it says, if Black Lives Matter, we would build a better, healthier future for our people. And, uh, you know, that starts with nutrition. And, and so I want to talk a little bit about food culture. You know, like, like you said, you're a black man. Uh, clearly, you didn't grow up on a plant-based diet, right? right. So yeah. tell, tell me a little bit about the paradigm shift of going from sort of the inherited diet, the food culture uh, that, is, that is very common in, in African-American households to doing a 180 and giving up certain things, certain things that are almost... Uh, sacred, <laughs> you know, and, and, and tell, tell us a little bit about how some of the obstacles that you face, if you faced any, and, and what was your motivating factor to keep going? Well, you, you know, the, the biggest obstacle was, was my relationship. I've been married 10 years. And to, you know, me and my wife, we always like to go out and eat, right? So uh, we would, we always love to go out. And now um, I like to cook at home, you know, and we, we still go out, but I have to, I have to look at the menu. You know, a, a lot of times um, they don't have uh, uh, vegan dishes, you know, they don't have any plant-based dishes. So you, you have to compromise with just some steamed vegetables and, and, and ask them if they have any, any type of mixed vegetables or, or, just a, or just a salad, you know. And I also talk about in the book, that is, uh, just having a salad with, with, with some legumes is, is, something, is, is something great for you can, you can eat for every day. I'm, I'm, a, salad, I'm a salad person. Um, but um, the transition wasn't, it wasn't that hard because I, I always considered myself um, trying to be on the healthy side. Mm -hmm. But when you get a little more information, when you, when you decided to cut out the meat and, 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 and cut out the fish, and cut out the dairy products and, and um, it was hard to give up cheese. I didn't know I was that addicted to cheese. Um, and that, and that was, that, that <laughs> cheese is a hard thing. But um, over time, you know, your taste buds begin to change. And, and those things that you used to, used to eat, they don't taste the same. Um, I remember I went, to, I went to Applebee's for a meeting and I ordered some steamed broccoli. And when they brought it out and I tasted it, it was so salty, you know? And, and, I, and I asked them, I said, did y'all put extra salt in this? They said, no, that's the way. But when your taste buds change, you start noticing how other, other restaurants and other places season their food. Because mm -hmm. when I steam my broccoli, I don't put any salt on it. So, so you, start to know, you start to notice the difference. But it's a gradual change. Um, I, I write about, you know, how, how do you adjust in my book? You know, if you're going to a restaurant, go online and look at their menu, you know, choose restaurants, you know, you can look on their menus when you're going out with people. It's, it's, it's kind of awkward sometimes, you know, but you, you get used to it. And, and when they're respecting you, you know, they understand when they're ordering the steaks and the potatoes and everything, and you order a plate of mixed vegetables and a salad, you know, I, it's, it's a strong mental, you have to be strong mentally too, because mm -hmm. you don't want to feel um, the, at, at the oddball at the table, right? You don't right. want to feel the oddball at the table. But if, if, if you're strong in your conviction, you know, and then you're also seeing the benefits you're, you're getting from it, right? Um, mm -hmm. Coming off of medication is a, is a wonderful benefit. And yeah. once you decide, once you come off that medication, you don't want to go back. So, so you'll stick to your guns in that. But I, I think um, I've been blessed, you know, to have a wife that's understanding. 
you know, I had to teach her some things too, because even, you know, getting organic, oh my God, I don't want to get that organic. What is that organic? No, it's just, it's, it's a better product. So, so sometimes you have to, my, my daughter's vegan. Um, she, she, she transitioned the same, around the same time I did. So it, it was, it was, it was, and she's a, she's a nurse. So, you know, it was good to have her in the house, you know, as my backup, you know, in this, in this transition in, in the house. So, but I, I think um, now my wife is over 50 and her body is changing. And now she's seeing the things that I was talking about two years ago right. that we need to start doing, you know, once you start getting older and start having to eat better and, and and take your vitamins and minerals and, and exercise and get enough sleep. All these things are part of health and wellness in yes, the yes, yes. process. So uh, I, I love that, love you, that you, you said that getting off a of medication is a wonderful thing because for a lot of people, that's not even something that they, they know is possible. You know, exactly. too often it seems that the older you get, the more meds you get on. Right. It just seems that, you know, you go from one to two to three to five to ten. Rarely do you find people who go from five to four to three to two to none. And so I am reminded of an article that I recently read that showed how, you know, they had um, uh, several test subjects and who were diabetic type two diabetics. And they found out that if you lose 10 percent, 10 to 15 percent of your body weight, um, about 90 percent of the trial subjects went into remission. So, and, and remission meant their blood sugar was stable. They no longer needed to take anything, any, any drugs or any pills or anything for their diabetes. So, you know, stories like that don't always make, you know, the front page news, but imagine we've got about 10 to 11% of the population that are diabetic. You've got another 88 million people, one in three adults that are pre-diabetic, right. you know, and nobody seeing, or the, the overwhelming majority of them don't know that it's possible to just simply losing weight. And, and the interesting thing about that article was uh, the way they got them to lose weight was they put them on a calorie restricted diet. Mm -hmm. And they, they also, you know, emphasize nutrition. So it was nutrient dense foods, yes. uh, as opposed to just, you know, carbs and exactly. sweets and cookies. So again, a testament to the overwhelming power of good nutrition. So, you know, when, when you talk about making this change and talk about how your wife and your support systems, you know, were, were instrumental in you uh, seeing this through. Um, and so you also decided to become a uh, certified health uh, yeah. in, in health and nutrition and becoming a vegan nutrition life coach. Yeah. Um, you know, what was that journey like and what do you do as a life coach? Well, you know, I, I think I'm doing what I'm doing now, trying to help people um, change their lifestyle and, 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 and be more mindful of their health, of their health and wellness. Um, I, I got online, I took, I took classes. More, it, it, at the beginning, it was to educate myself more, more than having a title or, or just to learn um, about health and wellness about um, vegan and, and, and vegetarian and, 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 and different diets. Um, it was to educate my, it was educate myself. But in the process, you know, I got a piece of paper from it. I got a title from it. Mm -hmm. But in, in that, I also used um, my journey um, to, try to, to try to help others um, and, and, and putting what I was doing um, on Facebook and Instagram and, and, and talking about you know, my journey and, and, and talking about, you know, what I went through with my mother. Um, one thing my mother said, um, it was two days before she passed. She said, I hope um, I taught you a lesson mm. um, with this. I hope you learned something from this. This will be my last lesson I'm going to teach you. Take care of yourself. Wow. You know, because she was somebody that will wait to the last minute to go to the doctor. You know, and she had all these different home remedies. You know, she was from the South. So she had all these different type of home remedies. And, and then I, I would force her to go to the doctor. But we have to be focused and be more mindful, you know, of, of our health and wellness. And, and, and God had blessed me to be, to have a platform um, with Black Westchester Magazine and 
talking about police issues and community issues. So I wanted to take that platform I had and, and start talking about health and wellness. And then COVID came and then it made it more prevalent to talk about nutrition and talk about taking care of our bodies and, 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 and talk about, you know, you could get the vaccine if you want to. I'm not getting in that argument, but the whole thing is with, with or without the vaccine, you still have to have proper nutrition, you know? So if we continue to talk about nutrition and, and talk about mental clarity and, and, and trying to change the paradigm in our communities, we can have a healthier community. Amen to that, brother. Amen to that. And, and you know, I'm also of the, the opinion that COVID is, is really a wake up call. Yes. Right. Yes. Because, again, you know, whether you get the vaccine or not, that's that's between you and your doctor. I'm not here to tell you what to do. You've got to assess your situation. But, you know, the fact that if you do get the vaccine, you can still spread the virus and you can still get the virus. It simply reduces the severity. Uh, you know, but nevertheless, it's not, you know, the one shot cure all, everything goes back to normal, take your mask off. The exactly. nutritional component, the health and wellness component still has to be taken into account. So I'm optimistic that one of the things that, you know, one of the lights at the end of the tunnel is that self-care will become a thing where people will now be interested in knowing what they can do to boost their immune system, be interested in knowing how they can lose weight instead of just, you know, making never ending resolutions that are never attended to. And so, but, you know, let's talk about, let's talk a little bit about making that change. So, you know, at any point that you, you know, you stop and you decide to uh, incorporate more of a plant-based diet in your, your nutritional uh, diet, you've got to con consider the fact that you've been living 20, 30, 40, 50 years and, you know, smoking everything, drinking everything, uh, uh, eating everything, you know, without a care in the world. And now you realize, gosh, you know, these things have accumulated. So I like that one of the first things that you mentioned is, look, you've got to detox, you've got to cleanse, right. you know, and, and I'm a huge proponent of that. Tell us a little bit about cleansing. What, you know, what is the, the idea behind detoxing and cleansing and what does it do to the body? Well, you, you, you want to detox. You want to get all the old stuff out of you. Um, that's been building up because if you're not eating right you're not having proper bowel movements right your 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 blood is your blood is basically as far as i'm i'm concerned is is toxic so so you literally want to try to cleanse your body and 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 get all the backed up material in your body and also it will, when you when you're detoxing you could detox you could do vegetable detox you could take teas, there's different teas that would detox. Um, a lot of different people have different ways to detox. But, but what I did personally, when I talk about it in, in the book, is, is, is just the, the, the smoothies and, and just the blending vegetables to help you get, to help move your, and exercise it, right? And also, was what, what was good for me, what, what a lot of people don't do, aloe vera is great for detoxing the body. Mm. I would take a piece of aloe vera, get, get the leaf of aloe vera, cut the ends off, chop it up, put it in the refrigerator, and 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 just eat the whole thing, the skin. Sometimes some people can't do it, but I, I just take a piece and eat the whole thing and drink a lot of alkaline water mm -hmm. to help me clean clean my system out. Also, Epsom salt baths, right? When, when you want to detox, you want to you want to get the impurities out of your out of your skin bring it out of your pores. Right, also, right. Now, when you detox in the body, you also got to detox the mind. Sometimes you got to take a break from social media, mm -hmm. right? We, we, all, we all talk about turning off our computer so it can reboot. Even our computer knows it needs to shut down from time to time, right? So we have to shut, we have to shut do that for our brains too because we're living in a 24 hour um, cycle now. Um, news used to shut off at 11 o'clock, right? It, you, you know, used to wake up and be the flag on the TV. You know, everybody used to see the flag, but TV is, is on. So, so your brain is constantly downloading information 
all the time. And some of us wake up, instead of meditating and praying to getting our body right, the first thing we do is what? We grab the cell phone, we go on Instagram, we go on Facebook, we check our emails. We, 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 no, you have, to, you have to break away from that. You have to detox the mind. You have to do a digital detox and take a break from that sometimes. So part, part of all, all of that is detoxing your body. And then once you get all that food out, and it takes a while because, because unfortunately, you know, there's, there's some people that really haven't been in the, to the bathroom in three, four, five days, you know, and, and they have to learn how to get all that stuff out. And in the process, you got to put good food in, right? You got to put fruits and vegetables in, right? You got to learn how to learn how to do that. And then once you get that in your body, then you, then you move, then you move forward, cleaning your body and your blood will clear out. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't know if anybody saw um, the documentary, The Game Changers, which is a beautiful documentary. I think it's on Netflix. It, it, it was produced by Arnold Schwarzenegger and a lot of people. And, and, and they showed how athletes, they took three athletes and one of them, one of them was a vegan, the other two ate meat. And they fed them burritos. The first day they fed them, they didn't, they didn't feed the vegan beef burritos. They fed the other two, and they took their blood, and they showed them how cloudy their blood was from eating this bur burrito. Then they waited. Then they came back, and they gave them vegan burritos, and they showed them how clear their blood was when they ate the when they ate the vegan burrito. So we know just eating our meals um, from just eating our meals can change the toxicity in our blood if, if we eat more, more, more of a plant-based diet. So, so those are the things that we need to do. But, you know, we need to detox the body and also detox the mind. You know, I always connect the mental clarity with, with whatever we're doing with the body. You're absolutely right. And, uh, you know, as you were speaking, I just kept saying guilty as charged, you know, with regards to the mental detox. I think Right. You know, that's, that's one of the, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's one of the resolutions I've got to start doing, you know, when I wake up, I'm usually on the news seeing what's going on, but you know what, I got to get back to praying, you know, sometimes you do a quick prayer, you get on the news, you spend more time on bad news than you do on focusing on what you right. ought to be doing for the day. So, exactly. you know, thanks for bringing that out. And, and um, you know, that's something that I need to work on personally. But, you know, another aspect, uh, you know, in the book you, and I love this, by the way, you talk about the gut and anybody who's, who's been, you know, part of this, uh, you know, self-care forum for, for, for the past couple of months, anybody here who knows anything about me, they know I love talking about the gut because it, it's the bulk of the immune system, you know, yes. and, and people don't really put two and two together, but, you know, and, and I want you to elaborate a little bit. I mean, you know, we've got, uh, 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 trillions upon trillions of cell uh, bacteria in, yeah. in in our gut, and it's really a, a mutual relationship because depending on the type of bacteria you have, they can be very helpful or they can be very harmful. Right. And and it, tell us a little bit about how to maintain, uh, you know, your gut. Tell us about you know the good bacteria, bad bacteria. You know, what can you elaborate? Uh, could you please elaborate on that? So, you know, I'm going to take it straight, straight out of the book, because I think the, the book is very, the book is very clear mm -hmm. when we talk about um, what, what are the health conditions that come from bad, a bad gut, right? Mm -hmm. So you have type two diabetes, heart disease, skin and hair is, issues, cancer, rheumatoid um, arth arthritis, multiple sclerosis, asthma, allergies, anxiety, depression, dementia, and ob obesity. Mm -hmm. There it goes back again, the physical still affecting the mental. And, 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 and when I was researching this and putting it together, I, I never thought um, your gut bacteria will make you depressed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, having, having bad gut bacteria um, will, will, will make you, will, will make you depressed depressed so we we have to enhance our and enhance our gut and and things we could do is we could really chew our food better 
eat fermented foods. Mm -hmm. Yogurt, miso, kimchi, um, tempeh, sauerkraut, pickles, those type. Um, take pro probiotics. You know, I, I think um, the probiotic industry blew up because I think that's the thing that they talk about. Um, drink plenty of water. Um, water is, is a superfood. I think water is one of the greatest greatest gifts of God, man, because water gives us a lot of energy. Um, exercise. Um, we have to exercise. Um, avoid excess sugar. You know, I'd say avoid sugar at, at all costs, but avoid excess sugar. Um, get enough sleep. Sleep is very key. Um, relax. Um, um, stress. Stress is another thing that that really kills our immune system you know a lot you know i tell my wife all the time you know my wife is a detective and she and, and she also has a business you know and, and i tell her you know if you don't rest you know your stress will make you sick mm -hmm. you know uh, stress is very very important because if, if if you're stressed out your body is fighting the stress and then it's not able to fight the, the illness and disease. So, so we have to try to, try to be um, unstressed and, and mm -hmm. learn, and learn proper things not to be so stressed. So, so those are things in the book um, that I talk about um, in, in, in keeping your gut health um, healthy. Yes, sir. So great points. Now, another point that's actually very interesting is, you know, in every, in every major religion, and, and in every uh, major culture, fasting is uh, uh, integral. Uh, you know, it's an integral part of their worship. I mean, you know, the Muslims fast, uh, the Jews fast, the Christians fast. I mean, Jesus fasted, yes. you know, um, you know, Asians fast, you know, they, they, you know, no matter the religion, fasting seems to play an integral role in these different, um, you know, uh, worldviews. And I think that uh, you know, this was further highlighted by there's this doctor by the name of Dr. Jason Fung. He's the author of a book called uh, The Obesity Code and the Diabetic Code, Diabetes Code. And right. so what he does over with his practice and, and the interesting thing about Dr. Fung is he'll tell you that he'll send his patients into remission of diabetes. It's it's not rare. Right. And his secret ingredient is fasting. And he uses this thing called intermittent fasting, where maybe you eat for eight hours a day, and then for 16 hours, you're allowing your body to exactly. metabolize and process and cleanse yeah. and everything like that. So yeah. you've got a small window of time uh, where you're going to eat, and then the rest of the day, you're letting the body do its thing. And so that, according to him and his testimony, you know, his patients, I mean, he's like a miracle worker, you know, because they're actually getting off drugs and getting off medications instead of staying on perpetually. But, you know, I want you to highlight a little bit about what you've learned and what you've, uh, you know, talk about when it comes to fasting and, and its importance. Yeah, uh, you know, I used to, I always loved the book um, by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, How to Eat to Live. Mm -hmm. and, and one thing the followers in the Nation of Islam, um, they always ate one meal a day. And they're actually intermediate fasting, right? Every day, because they're because they're allowing that that eating at one meal is allowing your body um, to one digest that food properly. Um, two, it's allowing your body to rest and and and, and rejuvenate. So when you when you're doing that uh, one meal a day, why right, some people. I've I've done three I've I've done three days of just drinking alkaline water, um, mm. to 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 just lose weight, but also give my body time give give my body time to to regenerate. I think fasting fasting is is great if you could do it. Not all not all people can do it. Um, one thing we have a like an internal clock where we're 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 used to eating. We're used to eating three, four times a day. So we trick ourselves and say we have headaches because we, we haven't ate it, mm -hmm. right? 
but it's just being mindful and understanding and trying to and trying to get through that. I know people that say they have headaches. Oh, I I, I didn't eat all day, you know, so I, so I have a headache. No, that's just that's just your body going through a little withdrawal there. Withdrawal, that's right. Your, your body because because you're you're feeding it at, at a certain time every day. It's not that you're hungry, right? It's, it's just that your body is used to having having you you just used to eating, you know. And and sometimes we think we're hungry, but we actually need water, right? And, you know, because a lot of us don't drink enough water, mm-hmm. so so we will eat food. But we actually need, there you go, but, but we actually need water. Um, fasting is great if you could do it. Um, some people, you know, depending on your age, you know, some, some, some people can do it and some people can't. But I think fasting is a way um, on, on, in, cleansing your, in cleansing your body also. But, you know, it, it also have a, a religious and, and, and spiritual um, aspect to it also. So, you know, if, if, you're, if you're religious, you know, you could fast and meditate and, and in tune your, your, your God frequency, you know, be, become, become more, more in tune through, through, through fasting, you know, and, and, it's, and it's a beautiful thing when, when you apply it. Yes, sir. Uh, one of the things that, you know, I smiled at when I read it, it's, it's not your DNA, it's what you eat every day. Exactly. And, and, I wanted, and I want to tell you a story. So I do speaking seminars. I used to do a lot of churches and predominantly African-American churches. And so, you know, uh, one of the topics that I would talk about among the, the many topics, you know, I would talk about high blood pressure. Right. And I remember this. Um, I was speaking on high blood pressure and obviously uh, its impact, um, you know, on not just the black community, but on different communities within these United States. And so I, I like to get interactive with the audience. And I remember asking the audience, you know, hey, why, why do you suppose, you know, high blood pressure is so prevalent uh, in the black community? And, and this brother raised his hands. I said, you have the floor. Uh, why do you support? No wrong answers. Okay. I just want to know what the people think. I want to get my, uh, you know, uh, I want to see what, what, what everybody has in, in their mind. So I know how to approach this. And, you know, the brother, uh, you know, he, he, he got up and he said, look, well, you know, when they took the slaves from Africa, you know, they, they didn't have much water to drink. And so as they crossed the Atlantic, and so once they got here, you know, they, I guess their blood vessels were just constricted. <laughs> so it just stayed like that. So according to him, that's why, you know, uh, high blood pressure is so prevalent in, 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 Amer- in African Americans. And so I'm like, well, what about the Africans? Because <laughs> you know? they don't have the same statistics. They have the same genetics but they don't have the same statistics. So, but, you know, it's really interesting how, you know, perhaps more than any other culture that I've encountered, black folks, black Americans, African-Americans will tend to justify poor health through their DNA. And I love that you address that. And, And, you know, it's almost like a mental curse that, well, I can't do it, you know, because it's in my genes. So, you know, I, I, this is my fate. And so I love that you at least make an attempt to educate people to break free from that mental slavery, break free of those mental chains. But I want you to talk a little bit about the fact that it's what you eat every day right. and instead of it being your DNA. Right. Yeah. You, you know, I, when I went to my doctor and when he, first put me on the medication and he's like, you know, he's like, oh, well, you know, it's probably hereditary, right? I said, well, how can, I said, well, how can it be hereditary with me? Right, he says, well, he says, well, your mother, you know, your, 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 your mother, you know, has it. And, and I said, well, I'm adopted. So, <laughs> so I, make the connection, doc, because I'm, that's, that's not my biological mother. So, so, so how could this, how, how could this be, right? Well, how, how it is is because we eat the same food in the house, right? I, I grew up eating the same foods as, 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 as she ate and she ate the same foods as, as her mother ate. So even though that we're not biologically relate, related, we have the same disease because we're, because we're actually eating the same foods. If you look at black communities throughout, throughout the country, they all had the same type of foods. And we wonder why 
that black people have these disease because they're they're eating eating the same foods and even they were they were there were, they were one doctor i saw on youtube was even talking to the point that the fumes that come from these restaurants even affect the community right yeah. and that's and, yeah. and and that's and that's crazy so we have a lot of fast foods we, we we eat a lot of soul food right and 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 really you know soul food is just is just slave food right it's just it's yeah. just actually you know and when we start having these conversations and and changing the titles you know we, we start looking at that so so we're looking at actually what the slaves took from the scraps and we all know the history of how how slave food but but the real real soul food is is actually fruits and vegetables and legumes and 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 and, and having it coming out the ground fresh and, and putting it in the pot and cooking it with, without all all these additives they had to put all that in there back then because it was literally just scraps from 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 the master's table so we have to change our our thinking um we have to change you know the our slave thinking because you know i i hate to be say it that way but but we're still thinking like that right we, you know so but we say black lives matter but we're still eating you know you, we're still eating what the slave master is giving us because he's putting these he's putting these restaurants in our community right mm -hmm. he's, he's making it cheap he's making it cheap for us to buy um now you could get uh two whoppers for five dollars you could get two meals and fries you know for five for, for five dollars you know and then people want to argue well you know organic food takes a taste you know it costs a lot yeah you know i can't afford that as a single mother yeah but your kid has six hundred dollar jeezy's on yeezy's on right <laughs> so so you know it you know our, our priorities as, as as black people you know are sometimes backwards when it, it should be on on our food you know, and, and, and not on our, or not on our clothes. Yeah, we all like them to have nice clothes, but we also should have put, be able to put, put nice food and, and understanding the importance of having nice, good food and nice food in our bodies. So, you know, we get that, but also, you know, right. It's a cultural conditioning because our parents and our grandparents and, and even our generation, we, we hear that, we hear that from the medical field that is, that is, it's, it's our DNA, you know, and I, I see some doctors like you and, and different doctors on YouTube that, that really, that really try to address that. But, but on the, but, uh, but on a bigger scale, you know, black people still think it's our DNA. Yeah. You know, and, and we have to have that larger conversation and that conversation should be, you know, have, have even have come from the pulpits in, 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 in the churches too. Indeed, indeed. I mean, look, brother, uh, it, it's a hard pill to swallow, but you know, if the shoe fits, hey, <laughs> you know, you wear it. But no, no, you, you bring up a really good point. And, and I want to emphasize this, uh, you know, because this DNA thing, you know, it, uh, somebody gave me an a, analogy um, a long time ago. He said, you know how, you know, if you go to a circus, and you know you've got this ringmaster who controls all these lions you know he controls this big old elephant the elephant could go on a rampage and nobody would stop him exactly. but this whole elephant is doing tricks for peanuts how do you control that elephant well it starts with when they're young mm -hmm. you know you chain them up and you teach them that they can only go this far and so as they get older you know they reach the, the threshold where you can no longer bind them. You can no longer lock them with a chain big enough. And so they can break through any chain that you, you know, put around their leg or, you know, but what happens is because from its childhood, the elephant's been trained not to even try to break free from right. the, the chain or the control, That's despite right. the fact that the elephant could easily break through, the elephant will not even try because he's right. been conditioned since childhood that listen don't try just go along get your peanuts you know <laughs> to your tricks exactly. you know exactly. juggle you know the beach ball or whatever and so it, you know that's that's the interesting thing I, and i want to say something else with regards to this dna thing 
I find it interesting. Now, I, I'm a member of the uh, Church of Christ. Now, my home congregation here in Westchester uh, is the Westchester Church of Christ in White Plains, back home in Rochester, uh, North Queens Road Church of Christ. So I get a lot of members of my home congregation to join these uh, podcast interviews. Now, one thing that's very interesting is that when you look at lifespan with regards to just religions, right? Mm -hmm. Find it interesting that the Seventh Day Adventist, you yes. know, uh, Seventh Day Adventist live on average ten years longer than the average American. Now, this is regardless of their race. Okay, mm -hmm. so if if you're you take a bunch of black folks who happen to be Seventh Day Adventist, they will generally live longer than black folks of any other category. So I'm calling my church as a Christ family. Like we got to step up. You know, we can't be. We can't be, you know, caught slipping. But, you know, these are black folks. But what happens is within that spirituality, within that religion, they have, you know, a, a, a protocol on diets. You know, they they tend right. to focus more on the Old Testament dietary yeah. laws, and 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 so, you know, there's nothing stopping us from doing it. You know, but some of us just like bacon too much. You know, so. <laughs> but you know, with that particular group. When you look at them, you know, they're just as black as anybody else. But what happens is it's their diet, it's their nutritional intake, you know, it's what they choose to eat and what they refuse to eat. That's what makes the difference. And it gives them a whole 10 years of longevity on this earth, usually healthier too, right? And so just that category, I mean, there are countless examples, yours being a good one, but just that example lets you know this genetics argument is nonsense it's cultural it's inherited it's what yeah. your you eat what your parents ate so That's if right. your parents are obese chances are you'll be obese okay right. only because what they're feeding themselves they're likely feeding you but you can always break free from that simply by changing your nutritional intake your diet culture and once you do that you realize you start to look less and less like your parents right so you know <laughs> exactly. so this it's a, I, I think, brother, it's a, it's, we, we have to be willing um, to change, right? Changing our diet is uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you know, and I remember I was on a, another Zoom call and, you know, it was this one, one woman who, I mean, her face was just so frowned up when I was just talking about, we just can't eat these foods, you know, even when, it was on the news um, that black people were dying more of COVID. And even with that, and they, and they were talking about uh, the chronic illnesses that black people have and, and the causes of it, it, it didn't change the Facebook feed of fried chicken, you know, this, that, that, this, this. The, the Facebook, women were still cooking it up. Look what I'm making tonight. Look what I'm making tonight, you know, and, and I'm like, I'm like, whoa, don't, didn't you just watch the news? Didn't you just see, didn't you just see what they're talking about? Do you, do you understand what they're saying, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so they're saying that the reason why we're dying more because we have more chronic illnesses and mm -hmm. what creates chronic illnesses is the food that you eat. But they were still cooking the whole timeline for whole 2020 was still the same food. So, you know, we, we have to, we have to just change our mindset. And it's hard, to, and it's and it's and it's really hard to change your mindset, you mm -hmm. know, for a lot of people to to stop cooking and 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 stop eating um, what they were used to eating because they might feel you know peer pressure, you know, they don't want to be the oddball out, right? You know, but sometimes for your for your life, you know, you should be that. Sometimes you have to be the oddball out for health and wellness. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, considering, you know, the alternative is, you know, decades of sickness, uh, chronic dependency on medications and, you know, essentially a poor quality of life. Um, but yeah, you know, tr transitioning from that to, you know, clean eating. Uh, tell us a little bit about clean eating, raw eating. What should we then uh, look to adding to our diets? What, what are some things that we should eat more of? What are some things that uh, you found to be very beneficial in, in terms of healing the body and optimizing its function for the better? I have a whole list in the book. <laughs> in, in the book. 
uh, also, um, on, on the way to that, we also should make sure that fiber is our best friend, mm-hmm. right? Uh, make sure that we, 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 we eat um, food, foods that are high in fiber, uh, which is brown rice, um, flaxseed, chia seed, almonds, oats, pears, berries, apples, bananas, avocados, beans, peas, lentils, broccoli, artichokes, carrots, Brussels sprouts, spinach, fruits and vegetables, legumes, all that is, is fiber is definitely um, um, good for your body. So we definitely need to have, we definitely need to have um, a lot of fiber. But a lot of the foods, um, mostly green leafy foods, all green leafy foods, but we want to also have the type of foods that will charge our body. Our body is electric. Mm-hmm. You know, our, our body, we have, to, we have to charge that electric current. And uh, there's a lot of vegetables and fruits um, that we can eat. Um, I'm just going to read some of them all. Mm-hmm. Alfalfa, barley grass, um, beet greens, beets, broccoli, carrots, cabbage, cauliflower, celery, um, charred greens, collard greens, cucumbers, dandelions, um, eggplant, fermented veggies, garlic, green beans, green peas, kale. I love kale. Um, lettuce, um, mustard greens, um, onions, peas, peppers, pumpkins, radishes, rutabaga, sea veggies. Sea veggies is also great. Um, spinach, um, sprouts. Then you got apples, um, apricots, avocados again, bananas, berries, blackberries, cantaloupe, um, cherries, coconuts, um, currants, dates, dried figs, dried grapes, grapefruits, honeydew, melon, lemon, lime, um, nectarines, orange, peaches, pears, pineapples, raisins, raspberries, um, rhubarb, strawberries, tangerines, tomatoes, tropical fruits, um, sweet potatoes, tomatoes, watercress, watercress is great, um, wheatgrass, and wild greens. Um, these are all the different foods that you could get that, that are good for you, mm-hmm. that has a lot of vitamins and minerals and fiber. Um, beans have protein. Um, um, a lot of people um, always would say, um, you know, you only can get protein for meat, and which, is a, which, is a complete, which is a complete lie. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you could get legumes. Um, they're, they're, they're good in protein. Um, I like to put a lot of them in, in, in my salad. I like to just boil them and put some seasoning on them, a little vinegar, and eat them just just that. So so you could get a lot of your protein um, from 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 a lot of different beans. And and, and I think that I think that's the, one of the biggest lies that people that they tell people. Um, uh, well, if you if you go plant based, you won't get enough protein. But there's a lot of there's a lot of fruits, there's a lot of vegetables that that you can get protein from. You don't have to have you you don't have to have meat. But 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 all these vegetables and fruits is is you could you could combine them and get different type of recipes. But if you you could eat them every day, or you know you could intermittent fast and 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 break your fast with these type of foods, and your body will your your body will cleanse itself, and mm-hmm. your body will heal itself. A lot of people. We don't talk about the power of the body in healing itself, but in order for our body to do that, we have to put the proper foods in it. It's very true. That's very. It's absolutely true. Now, I, you know, one thing that you highlighted seems to me that you know, adopting a, a more plant-based diet is not restrictive at all. I mean, you read off maybe twenty or thirty different things that you exactly. can eat. <laughs> so you have options. Exactly, exactly. You have options. You're not limited to, you know, just a few things that, you know, maybe are, and those things are delicious when cooked right. Yes. Um, so, you know, you're not losing out on, on too much by incorporating a more a plant-based diet. Now in your book, you talk a little bit about the clean eating, a seven day challenge. Um, yes. You know, tell us a little bit about what that challenge is all about. Is If you could go seven days, clean eating, no meat, no, no, no poultry, no, no fish, and 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 find um, some recipes, and and go seven days and eating clean, and exercising, and and see how your body responds. Um, I, I also talk about Meatless Mondays, which is an international 
um, international program where just just on Monday, just one day out of the week, <laughs> you start the week off, no meat. You know, and, and, and what I do on, on Facebook and Instagram, I, 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 on, on Mondays, every Monday, I talk about meeting this Monday and I post a recipe for, 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 for people can try um, if they, if they want to take that one day. But if they, if they, they big enough, you know, they could do, they could do the whole week and, 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 and see how their body responds and see, uh, and see how they feel. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, such a wonderful thing. Again, you know, you try it, see how it works for you. Usually what's, what people, many people will find is that, you know, the, the mental hurdle is really the biggest obstacle, you know, doing something new or doing something different from what, uh, you've, you've always done. It's sort of like how you highlighted earlier that, you know, when people start, you know, fasting a little or eating a little different, they start complaining of headaches, but it's really, these are really withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> they're not real, you know, they're not real headaches. You know, you're not sick. Your body is just, you know, trying to get you to revert to your original habit, but you know, you're, you're the master of the body. You know, you don't let the body tell you what to do. You tell it what to do and it'll conform. Um, no, but that's wonderful. And let's go back, you know, let's go back full circle. You know, I, you began this thing by talking about how it's not just about the nutritional aspect. You know, you've got, you've got the mental aspect. Yeah. So, you know, sort of with mental, you know, we're talking about uh, taking time away from, you know, social media or, or electronics the digital detox, you know, let's go a little bit about, you know, uh, taking time away from everything and to meditate or to pray. What are some of the benefits with, you know, with everything going on in the world and all the stresses and the fear that's being pushed by the media 24 seven for the past two years, you know, what are some benefits to actually taking time away from all of that and, and just sort of meditating and praying and well, the, the, the first thing you get to refocus, right? You, I, I think we, we get so busy and, and caught up with, with our everyday lives um, that, that we forget ourselves, you know? And, 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 and I like to do it in the morning when I wake up, you know? And I like to just lay there and, and, and meditate, you know? And, and, and also saying affirmations, as ma saying, affirmations in the morning or saying affirmations at night is a very very powerful thing for you you know for your own spirituality but but i think we have to reconnect right we have to reconnect with that god frequency you know that that we all have and we have to take that time to recharge and and think about our day whether we're starting the day or whether we or whether we're ending the day but it it, it takes time for our body to shut down that for five minutes, you know, and, and leave the world behind and just breathe, you know, and, and reconnect, you know, um, there's a lot of different forms of meditation. Um, yoga is all, all yoga is all, always great also. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in, in us reconnecting and recharging for five, for five or six minutes a day, you know, and thinking and, and some, and, and if you want to say, saying affirmations, you know, and, and charging our bodies is, is, is a beautiful thing. We don't do it enough. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think because we don't do it enough, um, our, our bodies um, are even stressed out even more. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of us don't even think about, you know, we don't even think about this. These are new concepts for many people. You know, yeah. the idea of just saying affirmations. But, you know, I, I just want to say, putting a little bit of a biblical spin on it, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You know, whatever you tell yourself about yourself, you will likely become first internally, then outwardly. So, uh, Brother Jones, uh, you know, I want to thank you. This is uh, Damon K. Jones, author of The Empowering Benefits of Detoxing, Cleansing, and Eating Clean. Now, uh, just for anybody who's watching this and, and wants to get the book, where can they uh, get this book? Um, you could go to my website, um, DamonKJones.com. Um, you can go straight to DamonKJones.com forward slash eat clean. Um, it is also available on Amazon. Just put Damon K. Jones in it or put the title in it. 
and, 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 and it will come up. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, um, Damon K. Jones. And you can follow me on Facebook, Damon K. Jones. I'm also on LinkedIn, Damon K. Jones. Um, so you can follow me on all those different platforms. Um, I always put up something. I always try to put up some type of um, inspirational quote. Um, always talk about health and wellness. Um, so I'll be, I'll be glad to see you on one of those social media platforms. Yes, sir. And of course, you know, we will post, when we post this video, we're going to have all your uh, social media as well as contact information. So I want to thank you for that. Now we, we get to the, the final part of this uh, interview. It, this is really just open to the public. So I'm really going to ask everybody um, you know, I'm really going to ask everybody to unmute themselves. You know, if you've got a question uh, for Mr. Damon K. Jones, uh, please feel free to unmute yourself. Go ahead and ask. I know somebody had already asked a question, uh, but I, I asked them to save the, uh, the question for, uh, for the end. So, you know, I, I just want to say that, you know, I, I believe it was Tammy. Uh, Tammy Roderick had a question. Um, Tammy, are you there? Okay, so well, you know what? Still muted. Uh, okay, so Veronica Shivachi uh, NP has a question. Veronica, thanks for joining us. Hi, not not much of a question. I just wanted to say I um, enjoyed the information. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us, Veronica. Yes, anyone else have a question, folks? Um, I have a question. Um, the I'm alkali water, this is Linda. Hi, Linda. Um, hi. Um, <clears throat> we drink purified water here at home. That's what we drink. I was wondering, I know you can buy alkali water, but is there any way that we can take our purified water to somehow make it alkali? Um, put lemons and lime in your water. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. It's a really good point. Yes, great question, Linda. Thank you for that. This is uh, Julius Hall. I have a question. Hi, Julius. Go ahead. Hello. Um, now, I have to become a vegan in order to uh, live healthier when it comes to food, or can I eat modestly, still continuing to eat meat? Well, I mean, the goal is to eat as less meat as possible. That's the goal, right? What, I, what I'm not trying to do is I'm not trying to go completely cold turkey and then end up, you know, not liking the vegan lifestyle and then end up, you know, binge eating and then end up with some, you know, underlying health issues. Exactly. Just, you know, the best thing is, brother, take it. Take it one day at a time. Like like I said, you could do meatless Monday, right? You could you could then you could say, okay, well, I'm gonna do meatless uh Mondays and Wednesdays. Then I'm gonna do meatless Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Okay. You know, and just it's a gradual, you know, it doesn't it doesn't have to be overnight. You just you know, you don't have to just run downstairs and throw all the meat out your refrigerator. You know, you know, you right. can just take it from take it at your own pace you know you're in charge of this so as long as as long as the understanding is that the data all the data shows that eating more fruits and vegetables in the rooms and exercising right gives you a healthier lifestyle and and if you are on medication gives you a road to become medication free right the process okay. now you're in charge of the process right so now i'm going to take it one day at a time i'm going to get my body used to it i'm going to get my family used to it I'm going to get my kids used to it everybody's going to get used to it and we're going to go through this process together till one day nobody's eating meat right nobody's eating dairy nobody's eating no type of dairy and everybody everybody's li living a healthy lifestyle so, so the book is not saying go cold turkey. The book is saying this is what you could do. Now you could take your you could take your own time in, in, in doing it. In doing it. Okay. I also wanted to mention, you know, uh being raised 
in a black household, you know, we had whatever was available to us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, on poor black communities, what you got on the corner, McDonald's. Right. You got these fast food places that keep uh, the black community where the black community is and which is in poverty. And you made some um, excellent, um, you said some excellent things tonight based upon, you know, changing the mindset. Because just because I'm this color does not mean I, I'm going to have a predetermined health issue. Right. Um, and I, I appreciate uh, you guys stepping up and uh, really um, extending that black voice out there saying that, hey, just because it's this way does not mean that it has to be this way. You can right. live healthier. So right. thank right. you. Mm -hmm. Great question. Great points. I, I do have a question, and I also want to say thank you for um, doing this podcast for us, because it's so important that we learn, you know, the, about the things that hurt us. My question is, um, my granddaughter, she has gone vegan, and she has a daughter that's three years old, and she's not feeding, giving her any um, thing that's going to put the calcium in her teeth to keep them strong. So what is it that she can do uh, to make sure that her daughter is getting calcium? Well, I mean, she should be getting calcium from the, the foods that she's eating because, I mean, milk don't give you calcium. Okay. You know, dairy does not give you, dairy does not give you calcium. Okay. So she should be the, the, the proper foods um, I don't know what she's feeding her, um, but um, if she's giving her um, proper fruits and vegetables, she should be giving enough calcium. All right. If she does a, eat. She does eat. Um, if she's not giving a dairy, then that's good because okay. Because All right, you know, studies have studies have also shown. Um, I had, I just did a video um, that um, they they came out with a whole study. Um, about dairy and, and and not even not giving the children dairy mm -hmm. uh, it ends up to have giving a lot of kids asthma you know and it builds a lot of mucus in the system so, right so I mean if she's giving her um, options almond milk um, yes uh, uh, my my granddaughter um, my daughter gives my granddaughter um, um, a plant-based a, a plant-based milk mm -hmm. uh, um, a plant-based vegan milk, and, and and my granddaughter's one years old. Okay. So you know, I mean, you could get the calcium out of out of fruits and vegetables, but um, just because she's not given a dairy, um, that's a good thing. Okay. All right. And she she does drink the almond milk. Yeah, that yeah. is what she drinks. Okay. Vanilla. All right. Awesome. Thank you. So I just wanted I, to. Add, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't know how to raise my hand on the computer. Forgive me. I'm just literally. Uh, that's my mentor <laughs> and, my, and, and my high school teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still learning so many things. I appreciate you, Damon. You know this. Thank and you. one of the things I wanted to hear was why my steak every week is not good for me because I really need to have my T-bone steak. <laughs> Ironically, you know, June Sutter, my former class. Uh, my well, she was a colleague, and I think you knew June Sutter, right? Yes. Yes. And June was switching in the process of her illness over to a vegan lifestyle. And in the course of that, we used to have our steak together, but she had to stop having that steak with me because she was trying to do this thing. Ultimately, she became anemic, and her doctor told her, Go back and eat that one steak. <laughs> so, I'm wondering. She needed the red blood uh, corpuscles because she was getting very bad. I'm wondering, how do we know what to substitute? You're saying just fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. There are vitamins, some more valid than others. When I listen to vitamin shows, you, you don't even know which vitamin to take because they got a whole series uh, of, of producers. Uh, some will claim it's natural, others will not. So we're sort of in the woods in how to make other choices. So is any of that listed in your book in terms of the real vitamins or advice on vitamins, how to subsidize our diets with vitamins? 
Good, good question. I had just did, um, you know, my wife, I just made a list for my wife. I'm trying to find the text too, since you brought it up. But um, I think I'll probably do an article about that. Listen to the audio version of the Self-Care Forum podcast on Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts.